Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii on uh, this Monday. It's 3 p.m. and it's Monday, and this show is the state of the state of Hawaii. I'm your host, Stephanie Stoll Dalton. Every two weeks, this show covers important topics and, and newsworthy sources about our state, city, and county. Topics include government, business, economics, law, education, pandemics, lifestyle, health, and dental care, and many, many others. And if you have a topic you'd like covered, please send it to me, um, Stephanie, and uh, I'm at thinktechhawaii.com. So please send me your suggestions. Today, I am welcoming um, our special guest, Councilman Tommy Waters, who serves as a council member for District Four. And he, there he is. And he uh, covers uh, in District Four, Hawaii Kai, and then Eva, quite a ways to Ala Moana Beach Park. So it's a very broad and diverse, uh, as, as all districts are in Hawaii, I'm sure it's probably rather even, but it seems like a, a large territory and very um, different um, all across, differences all across it. But as you know, the election results, the city council now has five new members and Councilman Waters is among uh, the continuing four of the nine total. And importantly, there is a new mayor, Mayor Blangiardi, with uh, approaches from that may be quite different from before, from, from his business background and experience. Now in Councilman Waters, we have an experienced government leader to talk about Honolulu City and County and how he will work for everybody's well-being under the brutal conditions we have of COVID with its strains on citizens' physical and mental health and, and all of our fiscal survival, like the pocketbooks and the wallets aren't empty or almost. So welcome, council member. Juan. Aloha, thank you, Stephanie Stoll Dalton for having me on your show. I've been looking forward to it all month. Well, good. I think uh, the live television show can be uh, stimulating uh, as, as a little part of your day. I know it's only a little part because you just told me your schedule, which is very rigorous all day long to have meeting after meeting. So I, I hope you're fine and healthy and able to manage uh, to get through all of that, a plus TV show. But um, I'm, I'm really pleased you can be here. And uh, I've talked about uh, kind of our brutal conditions, difficult conditions, but I know we have happy talk to hear as well. But um, I thought may maybe this is a happy talk topic. I thought I'd start with this question, which is how is reopening working um, during these last few weeks in, in Waikiki, given the numbers of visitors that are now allowed in? So what I do, I mean, as you mentioned, my district is, is rather large. It's all the way from Makapu'u Lighthouse along the ocean all the way to the Eva end of Ala Moana Beach Park. But I, I, I go through my district weekly. And this weekend, I, I went through Waikiki just to personally observe what's going on. And a lot of the hotels are still closed. And they don't plan on opening until the numbers come up. You know, there's a surge in positive tests on the mainland, which probably has an impact. Um, people aren't traveling as much as they were a year ago. You know, I hear Dr. Fauci on the news talking about how you, you gotta stay home, right? Which, which hurts our hotels, which hurts our hotel workers, which hurts all of our restaurants in Waikiki. It really felt like a ghost town yesterday. It really did. And it's so sad. It's so sad to see people hurting like this. Very tough. I, I know at one point I did get down to Waikiki to have the experience of standing um, alone on the Waikiki beach in the ocean, alone on this fabulous uh, spot. All right, some of the hotels are international chains and they, they are there and they are surviving not only from well, when they have guests there, however, they're managing to survive on Waikiki, but also they've got um, support from across uh, the world, wherever they're connected. But I, I wanted to know, as I was standing on that beach and looking and thinking, oh my goodness, even with it shut down, there's still lots of infrastructure here and there's lots that has to be taken care of. I mean, 
speeches, you really, they look like they just go on and on beautifully forever, but actually there's lots of work to do there, not to man mention the water and that sort of thing. Um, and then of course, while you were down there, you're saying that it, it is so sad, but I've heard reports that there are lots of people walking around with, without masks and looking like they're not doing their quarantine. What, what did you think? Did you see any of that? I did, I did. And of course, you probably saw in the news this weekend about our Honolulu Police Department, about 50 or so police officers who exceeded the chief's guidelines on overtime. Some of them by th over 300 hours uh, within a month span of overtime. And you know, my, my feeling is the police should be out there warning people of what the emergency mandate is and being polite about it. And then if people don't comply, then of course they have the power to cite them. But um, when I was down there, it wasn't bad. I saw a lot of people wearing their masks and that made me happy. But if I, if I may spend a few minutes, you know, we have the pre-travel test requirement. I was really pushing hard for a second test upon arrival because as you probably know that COVID can be within, within your body for up to five days without showing any symptoms whatsoever, five days. So when you take a test three days before you get on the plane, you could actually be positive, right? Get on the plane, come to Hawaii, and then exhibit, uh, what do you call it? Symptoms. But the most insidious part about this disease is that you can be asymptomatic, meaning that you won't show any symptoms whatsoever, but yet you can still transfer it to someone else, right? That's the scariest part. So what the city did was working with the state, purchased testing equipment, and it's down at the airport, and um, it's available to folks who who want to take a second test. I, of course, was trying to get the mayor and the governor to require the second, the second test, just because um, it's safer for the traveler, it's safer for our hotel workers, it's safer for our local population, and it's just a good idea to do, right? We had the CARES money from the federal government, and I would have made the test free. As it is now, it's voluntary. So you get off the plane, you're offered a second test, but you're told, hey, by the way, if you're positive, you need to quarantine for 14 days. And of course, common sense tells you that a traveler who's here for say seven to 10 days, who, you know, who could possibly have to stay in their hotel room the whole time when it's so beautiful outside, they're not gonna take that test. No way. So there's still some glitches we got to work out. Luckily, luckily that it hasn't spiked. So, so that's good. It hasn't surged as much as uh, some people thought it might. Well, see, it, it can. Yes, and you're pointing out something very important. I didn't get that, that the second one was, uh, in, was voluntary. So, no. uh, okay, now, now right recently I've heard talk about and in the papers that the belief that the understanding is that our infestation is coming from our community spread and not from the visitors. And um, while well, you're speaking to the fact that so far maybe not seeing the surge here yet, but you're pointing out that the potential to find out that in fact that isn't actually the case that it's all about local community spread and not about the visitors. What, what are you thinking about that, that statement? You know, I think that's accurate. It's when people don't comply with, with having five people together, no more than five people together. Fortunately, at the beach and other parks and whatnot, the police having cited so many people, I think at this point, people are complying with that. But at home, you know, I was at Costco and you see people with these huge shopping carts full of 
multiple uh, pumpkin pies, for example, right? I mean, just using common sense, on one hand, that means they're giving away pumpkin pies. Or two, they're having large gatherings at their home, right? Um, hopefully, they they bought pumpkin pies for their friends and, and relatives to take home. Yeah, but when right. you're buying that much food for the holiday that's coming up this week, you can only imagine that people aren't complying and they're having their friends and neighbors. And that's what's dangerous. Yeah, and, and we're on the on the verge of uh, of wearing out uh, the facilities, and uh, of course across the nation, the mainland's already doing that. So, and and I think uh, it it we're in a very dangerous uh, position, and hopefully, um, people look like they're doing maybe they won't really be that bad when we come to the day, and they'll be following directions because our population here in the state seems to be somewhat self disciplined and 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 cooperative. I mean, I'm I'm. I was so impressed for months the way everybody acted. And it's really only with this fatigue about it that it's coming to pieces. But people like you buoying them up to do so, maybe maybe we'll get through this. On the other hand, let's hope Tripler, Tripler is as big as it looks and can have, give us some extra space if needed. But- um, Can I give a shout out to the uh, city and county of Honolulu's website, oneoahu.org, oneoahu.org. And Stephanie, your, your viewers may want to go to oneoahu.org. It's a very, very comprehensive website. It has the tier system and it's really, really easy to understand. It's really intuitive. But also for those folks who need help with their rent or mortgage, if you have a mortgage, you can also apply. There's still money available to the city and county to help pay your rent or your mortgage up to $2,000 per month with an additional $500 a month for childcare. So if you if people are out there, don't wait because you, you have to apply every month. Well, you, but you only, well, let me rephrase that. I've had people ask, hey, can I get six months in back rent or back mortgage? And no, you cannot. You, you, you yeah. can only do it month by month. So please apply while the money is there. And the money has to be spent by the end of the year. So if, if viewers have not done so, please take advantage of that as soon as you can. Not to go. And that was, again, oneoahu.org. Okay. Yeah. We'll have the, to that the, up. the number is spelled out, O-N-E, one. Oh, it's spelled out. Thank you. One, O-N-E, Oahu. Okay, good. So I, I know I saw that you were very outspoken on that committee, the new committee that the council has put in place with a big, long name. Um, that um, is about economic assistance and revitalization. And you really spoke out about those numbers, not, not about getting the number, but the fact that the numbers of dollars were insufficient for what you thought many people would need. Can you talk a little bit about how that experience went and who responded to what? Absolutely. So the Federal CARES Act, gave the city and county $387 million. And that went directly to um, the city and county's coffers. But the mayor and his team had exclusive control over that money. So under the leadership of then Chair Kaika Anderson, he created the Economic Assistance and Revitalization Committee and tasked me to chair it. And we tried to get some or, or exert some oversight over how that money was spent. And for the most part, we at the council wanted to get it into the hands of the people who needed help. We were hearing about people going hungry, people not able to pay their rent or mortgage, and our small businesses that needed help. As you know, our small local businesses are the backbone of our community, right? If they go away, we're going to just be left with big box stores. And you know, then you have to work for uh, one of these big, large companies rather than having your own business. So I've been a big advocate, and so has the council, a big advocate for our small businesses. And I, I was hoping we would appropriate a lot more than what the mayor did do. Um, he did do a great job getting $75 million distributed to small businesses, which was you know, more than any other particular group. 
But, mm -hmm. but again, I think we could have done a little bit more for our businesses in 75 million really push it to the limit but thanks for your pressurizing i mean that's what what it takes um and to to meet the needs which are are, are gargantuan at this point and i know um we all are just so hopeful and trying to help the small businesses of of hawaii and honolulu um i wanted to go back to the waikiki hotel sure. just quickly because i wanted to know what if you think that the hotels um are carrying their fair share of the burden for monitoring and well and even infrastructure which is a bigger city county topic but but as far as all of the work that the police are asked to do and others who are involved in that monitoring or siding or just keeping a track of what's going on what do you think are the hotels kicking in on that and helping yes as a matter of fact uh they are and i spent quite a bit of time with the various uh, hotels and the various hotel industries, you know, I was incredibly impressed with the Kahala. You know, um, it's not Waikiki, but it's the Kahala. They would test their, their well, first, they'd tell the visitors before they arrive through email that this is what's going to be required of you. When you get here and you check in, you know, we're going to have you wear a mask. You need to wear a mask while you're on property. We're going to take your temperature when you come and check in, right? Um, and I was so impressed by that, so impressed. Um, the other hotels, they, they wanted to make sure the guests' rooms were clean property, and they purchased a lot of expensive equipment in order to do that. Um, you know, at the same time, what I've offered to the hotels, I said, you know, the, this is where government can help you. Like if your guests want to get tested or your hotel workers want to get tested, we should provide that test to you for free, right? That's what the CARES Act money is for in my mind. And we should test as often as needed and then trace. That's, that's something that I think government has been lacking on tracing where, where people are going who's positive. And it's so easy with today's technology, you can put it on your phone, right? There's applications that will do that for you. And that's what other countries do. You could be walking around Waikiki Beach or Ala Moana and your, your phone will, will give you a notification that you're in the near vicinity of somebody who had tested positive. How easy would that be, right? We should utilize this type of um, technology. Although I will say though, people you know, are concerned about their privacy rights as well as they should be. But you know, we have a pen worldwide pandemic that are killing people. I think we should be able to put some of those privacy interests on the side for the greater good of us all. Remember our responsibilities as well as our, our rights, um, certainly. Well, let me ask the bigger question then. In general, uh, can the city council, oh, and the state too, I guess, but who's going to get us out of this budget hole? Uh, are those uh, then going back to all of these hotels down there? I mean, they're multi national businesses and they've got problems and they're getting hit too, but there's probably still a margin of profit. But yeah, do they help Honolulu to keep this golden goose for Hawaii uh, laying its eggs? I mean, if, if so what, what, what's that picture like? Can you share on that? Absolutely. So primarily your property taxes is what keeps your city afloat, your property taxes. On the state side, of course, it's your income tax as well as the GEP, general excise tax. What also, you know, keeps your city running is the user fee. So this past week in a special budget hearing, we talked to the budget and fiscal services director, and he indicated that we've exceeded uh, this month, ex exceeded by like two or 3% the collections of property taxes. So that hasn't been a problem, which is great, right? Everybody somehow has been able to pull it together and pay the property taxes, including all the hotels. Wow. But there's still a deficit because all those fees that normally the, the city gets a, a piece of, like you know the gas tax, when you go and pump gas, 
everybody's staying home. So they're not going and buying as much gas. And that typically would go both to the state and the city coffers. And that's not there. You know, registration of your, your automobile, for example, that has slowed down as well because for a while there, Satellite City Hall was closed and you couldn't re-register your car. But it's things like that. But I really believe that, that we need to tighten our belt and, and do more with less. But the city is in much, much, a much, much better place than the state is. Because as you know, the state doesn't, doesn't have the general excise tax that it once did as a result of everybody out there spending. Also the, well, the transit accommodations tax, the TAT as it's known, that, that's non-existent now. And that's a huge hit to both, both the city and the state actually. Well, when I met, when I interviewed uh, Mr. Blangiardi and some others and the other candidates, that was one of the questions I had as this thing was rolling over us with such horror in it, um, was how, who's got the skills to wrangle the state to get the city funded enough to be able to survive? So are you all, are you, are you're all probably working to, to see what can be done about that and, what are the levers and what about this is again, somebody coming in without government experience and not maybe needing help from those of you that understand how, where those levers are and what is it you can push and pull? Well, our new mayor is a business person, which is great, right? Oftentimes you wanna run government more efficiently and as a business person, hopefully he has that type of uh, experience. He also hired Mike Formby, Mike Formby. He was my predecessor. You know, he sat in District 4 during the interim between the election and the special election. So he has that experience as well. He was director of transportation services at one time. He was the director of the HART. Actually, he was on the HART board and he, he was the CEO for HART, interim CEO for a little while. And then under then Governor Linda Lingle, I believe he worked for um, the harbors division over at the state. So he has a wealth of knowledge. And I do also want to uh, point out that the city council is lucky enough to have Calvin say, he's a newly elected council member from district five. I believe he's your council member. You may recall when he was in the legislature, he was the chair of the finance committee oh. for about a decade before he became the speaker. So he's very well versed in, in the budget process. And we're gonna be leaning on him quite a bit to help us get, get through this tough time. Well, I know that uh, there's, as you do the reshuffling and get used to be trying to be more collaborative than otherwise um, and utilize all of these uh, fabulous uh, resources and depths of knowledge um, that you're, you're considering maybe taking the place of uh, Ms. Kobayashi who's leaving and there's an opening in the chair of the council. And so can you talk a little bit about what you're thinking of that? Well, that process is ongoing. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, my style is being collaborative, trying to get everyone to buy in. You know, I really believe as, as you know, that it's gonna be a very, very tough financial fiscal time. But it's important for us to stay focused on, on the problems that we need to solve. One is a balanced budget, of course. But two, we have a horrible homeless problem in every one of our districts, right? Affordable housing is, continues to be a problem. And of course, pocketbook issues, the cost of living. So what I'm gonna encourage my colleagues to do is to stay laser focused on these issues, right? There's a lot going on out there but these are the important issues. You know, you may be aware, Stephanie, that I, when I, I campaigned, I walked door to door and I knocked on 15,000 doors. I went through two and a half pairs of shoes. <laughs> Literally, there's holes in my shoes from walking door to door. But it's the best way to find out what people want and what's important to folks. And that's what they said. They can't afford to live in Hawaii anymore, right? There's a horrible homeless problem and their kids have no, no place to buy of their own. By the way, I just wanna share this with you. I'm the fifth of six kids. 
me and all my siblings were born and raised right here in Hawaii. We're, we're native Hawaiian. I graduated from the Kamehameha School with two of the, the six siblings. But I'm the only one still here in Hawaii. It's so sad. My parents moved to the mainland. My dad went to St. Louis High School. He's born and raised here, right? My grandmother was a Kamehameha graduate. But they moved to the mainland, my parents did, and they both passed away there. And five of my siblings are currently living on the mainland because they can't afford to live here. Right? It's yeah. displaced Hawaiians, which makes me really sad. And by the way, that's why I ran for office. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing is because there's a lot of families have the same situation as I do, that they can't afford to live here. And it's really, really sad. Well, that is a very difficult for the economy of the state. It's not, not just personally being distressed and um, having that kind of disappointment in your life, um, which is very, very taxing and burdensome, but it's also the state's losing um, thousands of people too every year because they can't find work. And I guess that gets into a, the topic we go on about, the diversifying the economy. And of course, in your district, yours, is you're right there at the heart, the major big golden heart throb of the Waikiki, which is was at one time the goal of diversifying the economy when we had the pineapple and the sugar and all the other going on. So then it was, let's go with diversifying into tourism. And of course, now that's that's it. That's our economy. And obviously that can't, we can't depend on that uh, completely as we see as a result of this uh, this pandemic. So when can we, like you say, you're going to laser, you're going to use your laser pointer to get to these really important budget topics, but then this is up way, way high on your agenda too. Absolutely. And I'm a big proponent of small businesses, right? Like I said, small businesses are the backbone uh, of our community. And, and that's pretty easy. I mean, when we talk about diversifying the economy, you know, people talk about agriculture and aquaculture and other things. Well, how about just supporting small businesses, right? Supporting these small little mom and pop surf shops or smoothie shops or, you know, healthy food, right? We need to grow our own food and serve it in our restaurants. Could you imagine if we just did that instead of imported yes. all of our food? That could be a breakthrough and maybe doing so. Yeah, people are doing farmers markets and um, trying to make some money in that manner. So I know there's lots of good heads for thinking about this and we do have to do that because it's very sad to have um, the heartbreak of not being able to be here if you want if you want to be here. But it turns out that we're, we're getting to aloha time here. And I wanted to just quickly ask the question if the ha happy talk includes the virus giving us a break on the traffic. Does that solve your campaign traffic promise to, to make that better? However, I'm sure you would agree with me that it'll just be coming back once we get back to business here, right? Well, you know, it's interesting. Thank you for bringing that up. If you ever drive by Aloha Stadium and it's full, you know, the first time I saw that, the, the parking lot's full. First time I saw that, I thought, gee whiz, what's going on at the stadium? It's all rental cars. So you know when you're driving around at noon, you know, going from one appointment to the other, there's rental cars on, on, there's on the road. Small business too can be large, but we gotta go. Okay. And I'm thank you so much, council member. Good, nice to see you. So great to meet you. And it was a wonderful uh, conversation, very informative and rich. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Aloha.